So good afternoon, all of you. Um, good afternoon, sir. Uh, Sixty-one students joined. I will wait for two minutes. So uh, last class we were discussing about uh, what we discussed. We were discussing about uh, building planning principles. I hope you remember what we discussed in last class. You remember? Hmm? So what we discussed in last class? So we discussed mainly the classification of buildings uh, as well as we discussed about the uh, building planning principles. These two major things, uh, these are the two primary things we discussed in last class. So classification you already know that building planning principles uh, we discussed. Uh, what are the building planning principles we discussed? Aspect, prospect, privacy. Privacy. Aspect we discussed here. What do you mean by aspect? What is the meaning of aspect? A skillful arrangement of doors and windows. Okay. So you see, uh, before actually, before you are going into actual drawing, you should know these uh, building planning principles. Because I already discussed, because uh, without knowing that the principles behind that, you are unable to do proper, uh, what to say, uh, drawing actually. So that's why it's very important and significant. You should know what are the planning principles you should provide actually. So last class we discussed already some of the planning principles we discussed like uh, you know that I think uh, nearly 10 uh, building planning principles are there. Aspect there, prospect there, 
uh, privacy there, grouping there, roominess, then the requirement of furnitures, circulation, sanitation, and elegance economy. So these are the major uh, principles of uh, planning. There we discussed about aspect last year class we discussed. The aspect means how you can arrange doors and windows in the external wall. Otherwise, you can see aspect also considers proper placement of different groups that we discussed. Last class, uh, we discussed how you can uh, make a steady room, how you can make that position of what to say, location of uh, a kitchen and living rooms. So, how you will get the maximum diffused sunlight and uh, ventilation and in such a way how you can orient the building. That is the uh, meaning of aspect. Okay, that is aspect. That means how you can do the proper placement of various rooms in a building according to their activities. So that is first thing we discussed. I hope you remember. And the second thing we discussed, uh, I hope you remember, that is prospect. So what is prospect? Anybody can uh, explain what, what do you mean by prospect? What do you mean by prospect? Prospect is outside. what the inside observer can see the view, desired view of outside. Okay. It can be the structure of windows. Yes, yes. Actually, prospect is mainly the arrangement of windows actually. And in the external walls, which allows the inside viewer to enjoy the outside pleasant views such as garden scenery we as we discussed the last class okay at the same time uh, to avoid undesirable views also from outside so that is the concept behind the prospect prospect also we discussed uh, different types of prospect from windows we discussed how he is getting inside viewer how he is getting that vision that also we discussed in last class i will share the ppt so where it is yeah so that uh, we discussed this is aspect this is prospect we discussed so here uh, less view here you can see how that internal observer is here how this move uh, that uh, vision is going okay in that angular vision you can see so where uh, in this case so uh, in third case you can see how it's getting uh, more prospect view actually in that uh, fourth one it's getting uh, about uh, uh, more than average uh, observation otherwise uh, that uh, prospect view is uh, uh, it's by the inside viewer actually so that is the prospect meaning it is nothing but uh, uh, that uh, it shows how to achieve best possible prospect from window projections actually. That means desirable views are made visible by projecting windows in that direction and undesirable views are kept hidden by using concealment walls actually. Here you can see in such a way that you can design your drawing actually. Because I already discussed uh, one important thing, how you can satisfy that uh, customer. Because customer requirement is there. Because some customer will require their plans accordingly. Somebody will tell their prospect ratio is this much. So accordingly, you have to design your walls and uh, windows. <coughs> That's why this prospect uh, principle is very much important. And another thing we discussed is privacy. I hope you understand what is the meaning of privacy. Nowadays, uh, uh, especially in residential buildings, that privacy is one of the important building planning principles. You have to uh, consider uh, when you are doing building planning actually. That privacy, how we can achieve privacy, I already discussed. Because one figure also last class we discussed, this is one example. Normally, this is your room is there, if you are uh, putting your door in this way, in the mid of the wall, what is happening? You can see that uh, vision angle is actually, it uh, covers the entire room actually. Are you understanding? So this is, uh, we never provide any privacy. Actually here, no privacy you can observe. In second figure, you can see here. <clears throat> here, normally, if you observe uh, most of the rooms where you provide doors, Normally, we never provide doors at the center of wall actually. 
except uh, some uh, office buildings or something you i am telling about the residential because privacy everywhere privacy is necessary but uh, residential buildings it's more uh, valid so there what we are doing is uh, the way of arrangement of uh, doors is very much important in order to uh, get a uh, good privacy so that's very much important consideration so in addition to that we discussed uh, uh, how you can provide uh, privacy within rooms uh, because internal uh, privacy you can provide by using screen screens you can use shelters you can use shutter you can use somebody will use some partitions you will use somebody will use lobby lobbies also we can use in order to provide maximum privacy in addition to that external privacy also there external privacy means uh, suppose uh, your uh, house is there in front of the house some road is going so how you can uh, get maximum privacy from that outside viewers actually that is called external privacy so in uh, if you are designing some building plan external privacy also one important thing actually there what we are doing is we uh, provide various types of uh, growing plants trees creeps etc otherwise uh, uh, that uh, shutters shelters etc we can provide so uh, that is you can do additionally but internally uh, how you can do that i discussed uh, that orientation of uh, how you can orient that uh, doors and uh, windows in order to minimize the maximum observation from the outside uh, observer so that is very much important and uh, and another we discussed already okay uh, uh, normally providing windows at uh, high levels uh, that also we can do then uh, <coughs> providing separate entrance to every room through passage then uh, non transparent glasses <coughs> normally residential buildings you can see most of the people will prefer non transparent uh, glasses to in order to Uh, prevent that vision actually that also one of the method we will uh, discuss next is grouping grouping also we discussed last class what do you mean by grouping anybody can say grouping is very much important because while doing drawing with if you are not doing proper grouping your plan get rejected actually what is the meaning of grouping arrangement of different rooms according to their function okay that is very much important actually uh, grouping yeah same thing only because uh, as we know because different rooms are there different rooms have different functioning is there so grouping should be such that the function of each room uh, is performed smoothly that means all the rooms should be grouped in such a way that that person passing from one room to the other should feel it inviting and encouraging and also that movement should be very much easy so that's why if you are uh, doing some plan suppose i am giving some specifications i need uh, this much things in my house so you have to arrange uh, the rooms as per its functions actually so you have to consider the functions of various rooms along with their interrelation in the building actually <coughs> are you understanding that's why proper grouping provides smooth change over while visiting one room from the other <coughs> including everything the proper access <coughs> how you move from one side to other so because you see kitchen is there dining hall is there how you provide that uh, the positioning of kitchen and the dining room <coughs> the living room is there bedroom is there <coughs> so living room and bedroom uh, how you do that plan actually that is very important so bedroom is there living room is there so where you keep the door that is very a big question actually so there you have to consider the privacy matter so you see we will consider everything there actually that is called a, a grouping actually how you are making that proper grouping actually okay so that's uh, very much important uh, one example i have told you kitchen and dining room should be adjusted if you are providing kitchen one side uh, dining room some different side uh, it's not easy to access because you have to serve food from dining room because it should be very adjacent then the another thing is that living room should be next to reception room actually 
then kitchen and the bedroom should have approach from living room then passages should be minimum and the staircase should be near to maximum rooms actually so these are the things you have to take and care of actually are you understanding when well, do grouping whatever the things convenient to a particular person or that uh, who are living inside the house should get satisfied it should be encouraging them okay so in such a way you have to do that uh, grouping because it considers all the functions of the uh, various rooms along with their interrelation in the building so it's very much important uh, grouping is one of the uh, what to say one of the major uh, planning principle because uh, we will give only specifications to you grouping here is your uh, ideology because if i give one uh, my specifications 100 people will do 100 types of plans actually you know that so everybody's ideology is different their concept is different their plan is different so while you do you can draw your plan no problem but while you do plan uh, when you draw something these all things are very much important because if you are not considering these all aspects uh, last class i i showed my two figures actually i think you remember so here what is a, which one is better i i asked you so you see that is the thing we have to take and care of whether it is uh, industrial building whether it is commercial building whether it is residential building how you are uh, doing uh, grouping how you are executing grouping is very much important so those things uh, it's very much important i hope we discussed this much in last class i hope so next thing is that uh, we will discuss about roominess that is the next thing next building planning principle that is called a roominess have you heard about the term roominess 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 also one of the important building planning principle roominess roominess that word only means it roominess what is the meaning of roominess because nowadays uh, people are living in urban area or city center it, this planning principle is very much important because you know that nowadays you can see in city area and everything you are getting very uh, small area plot so you see i am giving small area plot and my requirement is maximum so how you satisfy the requirement in that small area that is very much important nowadays people will uh, build uh, buildings in small area requirement okay in small area plot uh, what are the things they can satisfy that is called optimization of the space how they can do that okay so uh, that is called the roominess uh, here what we are doing is uh, an apparent feeling of spaciousness or extra space created by the shape of the room is known as roominess because uh, why it's very important i already discussed because our plot area is very less and i am giving my specifications but your responsibility is how to optimize your area and how to maximize your requirement how you do that that is a very challenging thing actually because uh, it should do actually most of the nowadays architects and uh, engineers they are doing these uh, things very uh, what to say uh, they are doing it very well nowadays because uh, nowadays it's uh, very much urgent because nowadays especially in city uh, planning and everything otherwise uh, when you are getting very limited space within that limited space how you can maximize your requirement so that is room in us so roominess produces actually an effect of more space from the room or small area and the small dimensions that is the uh, concept of roominess roominess in it should produce an effect of more space from the room of small area so how you can do that actually that is a question so increase in room area require more expenditure so how you can do that So I already discussed the roominess is produced from the minimum dimensions of the room. 
by pro how you can do any anybody can say how you can provide room in us better room in us providing mirrors avoiding providing mirrors mirrors ah mirror ah what having mirrors to give more how Like if we see in the mirror, we will see that the space is more than enough. <laughs> Any other comment? Sir, avoiding unwanted structures like uh, beam, column in between, uh, okay. shelf and all, concealed shelf like that. Uh, you see, spacing is not related to beams and everything. Sir, using lighter shades of space. What? Not audible. Not audible. Not audible. Uh, you want to say something, Varun Kumar Reddy? Sir, sticking any posters of nature to the walls. Okay. The light colors usually make it look brighter. You see, it's not about looking actually. It's spaciousness actually. How you can provide the maximum space in the spacious a space actually? Because small area is there, but it uh, should look like a maximum spacing. How it uh, you can provide? That's my question actually. Address the number of floors or stories, sir. Uh, somebody told the arrangement of who told it? arrangement of furnitures. Yes, yes. Uh, that is one thing. Yeah. That is one way. You pro, a proper arrangement of furniture and the doors. Yes, that is one thing. Anything else? Shape of rooms. Yes, shape. That is very much important. Sir. Yeah. Tell me. Sir, so constructing four inch wall inside and a nine inch wall outside. Uh, I I don't understand. Who told the Sandosha? What you told her? Ah uh, yes, sir. Uh, what so, you like constructing four inch wall inside, like constructing four inch wall inside and nine inch wall outside, like you using okay. small bricks. Okay, but it depends on the design criteria, because you see one thing, uh, building planning means you are not designing anything. You are just giving a drawing that uh, engineer should design actually, because that is not in your hand actually. After you give drawing only, you will design accordingly, whether the structure stability and everything. Okay. Anyway, that is one option. Okay. Anyway, it's fine. But uh, two major things are somebody told actually. That is uh, proper shape actually. Because uh, how you are making the shape of the particular room. That's very much important. And second thing is that how you are arranging the things inside the room. That's also very much important. Arranging arrangement of one is uh, doors. Second is uh, furniture. Then one one more thing, uh, uh, whatever uh, uh, Sandosh told, uh, you can uh, reduce that wall thickness. Yeah, you want to say something? I, yes, sir. By constructing a rectangular room in the same area, uh, instead of the constructing the square room. Yes, exactly. So that's absolutely right, actually, uh, because uh, I will show one figure. One second. Uh, that figure is not here. Uh, one, uh, what is that name? Green building. This, uh, it's visible to you. Is it visible? Yes, no. Is it visible or not? It's not visible, sir. No, sir. Okay, one second.
okay uh, what uh, he told is absolutely right for example uh, you you take one uh, for example 24 uh, square meter room so 24 square meter room you can make in uh, what to say square shape also and one thing is that you can make it in what to say a uh, rectangular shape also actually you can see that uh, for example if you are making in uh, rectangular shape it is 24 square meter 24 square meter means you can make into 4 into 6 4 meter breadth and length is 6 meter that is uh, one way you can construct it. but same 24 meter square you can make it into square shape also that is 4.9 into 4.9 here you can see uh, you can see there are two dimensions actually one is rectangular one is square actually so uh, whatever he said is that is absolutely right rectangular uh, will give more roominess compared to uh, square actually rectangular room is felt larger than the square room of the same area that's why a rectangular room is felt larger in respect of its utility why it's become larger the reason is nothing but area is same only because for utility rectangular is very much uh, what to say comfortable actually if you do for furniture arrangements uh, for shelves uh, and everything that uh, rectangular shape is much more felt larger in uh, arrangements of various items inside that room actually so that's why that uh, in roominess while you design while you drawing it you have to consider this don't do uh, what to say a square room don't prefer uh, square rooms square rooms also they are no problem 3 by 3 rooms are there it's not an issue but uh, in order to consider rooming make it in rectangular shape actually so that is uh, one uh, major concept behind roominess how you can make the feeling of spaciousness and extra space actually okay so that is the basic concept of behind roominess and uh, uh, in case of roominess uh, one more thing uh, is there that is uh, the how you can arrange the building actually uh, based on the length breadth ratio normally you have to provide a length breadth ratio of 1.2 to 1.5 okay so normally uh, while you plan any kind of drawing uh, you have to better provide your ratio between length and breadth 1.2 to 1.5 which give a uh, better uh, roominess and if suppose if it exceeds to that length to breadth ratio exceeds to that undesirable roominess that creates bad feeling of in that particular room so that's why uh, always uh, in case of roominess you always keep that length breadth ratio in between 1.2 to 1.5 this also you have to consider because in roominess two things you have to do one is shape of the building shape of that particular room and second you can do is Uh, how you can arrange that particular uh, what to say uh, furniture etc inside the room and third thing you can do is uh, normally i don't know you observed or not uh, somebody you told you can uh, i don't know who said uh, somebody told uh, they can reduce that uh, size of that wall something like that somebody told but instead of what we are doing is uh, you can see that wall shelf construction of wall shelf actually that also what method of roving us actually how you can make utilization of these walls actually how you can make some uh, what to say some drawers how you can make inside the walls how you can make some shelf inside the walls in such a way also you can do the rooms so normally shape is very much important shape normally you have to prefer rectangular shape otherwise length breadth ratio always should Uh, in between 1.2 to 1.5 don't exceed 2 that's uh, become so much uh, that roominess uh, very bad roominess will look at that time then one more thing is that how you can make utilize of walls actually for shelves and drawers etc okay 
So that's all about ruminous and uh, so mainly depends on ruminous mainly depends on dimensions of the room, disposition of doors and windows. And uh, another thing is that uh, for ruminous uh, that uh, height of the building actually. That's also very much important actually. Normally, what is the height of the room residential building? Can you tell me what, what is the minimum height you will provide for residential building? So 10 feet. 10 feet. Uh. Sir, 9.5 feet. Sir, 11 feet. 11 feet. Uh. And, uh, 12 feet, sir. 12 feet. What's your height? 10 feet, sir. 10 feet. 2.54. Sir, around 3 meters. How much meter? Sir, four meters. Around 3 to 4 meters, sir. Yeah, no, four meter we never prefer for residential. Okay, ah, three meter, fine. If you prefer for Bengla type and everything, you go for high rise actually. For normal conventional residential building, three meter actually. Four meter and above four meter, you go for uh, hospitals, uh, then for uh, school and educational buildings and everything, you go for more than four, okay. So normally for residential building, a minimum height should be 2.75 actually, minimum. Because you know that, uh, what is a uh, high door height, you know? Normal door height actually. Different heights are there, I'm telling about the normal door height. Normal door height, you know? Six feet. Seven. It's, uh, it's almost two meter actually. So your uh, lintel will come over that door, it's 2 meter, so so the height should be above that also. That means uh, 2 plus 1 meter, that is 3 meter. So minimum you have to provide 2.75, at least 2.75 is necessary for in order to get better occupancy of the building. So that's why uh, these three things uh, will uh, will actually will actually uh, what to say determine that roominess dimensions disposition of rooms and uh, that arrangement of furniture etc so that is the thing about roominess uh, so these all things you will consider when you uh, draw your plan and everything this is what i discussed from starting from whatever things we discussed everything is very much important when you are uh, designing your plans so another is uh, the sixth one is uh, uh, what to say uh, that is uh, furniture requirements. That is also one uh, building planning principle furniture requirement. That is I think uh, one uh, sixth one furniture requirements. So furniture requirements you know what is the meaning of furniture requirement? Furniture requirement is nothing but uh, it is the uh, that consideration uh, because uh, uh, depending on the function of the rooms uh, and uh, uh, the, the number of persons living inside the rooms uh, and based on the size and shape of uh, various rooms. Uh, so accordingly you can arrange that furniture for different rooms actually. For example, if your uh, study room is there, so what are the furnitures your requirement? You know that study room, tables, chairs, benches or cupboards like that. For example, bedroom is there. Bedroom, what are the furnitures? Are bed is there, ch easy chairs or dressing table like that. For example, kitchen is there. So kitchen, what are the things you, kitchen you know that. Kitchen, you uh, cooking platform is necessary, cupboards, mainly cupboards and shelves are necessary. So then uh, dining chairs, dining chairs, uh, the, so <laughs> for me, uh, then fridge, uh, those things. Uh. In similar way, living rooms, uh, tables, chairs, sofa sets, uh, showcase, showcase also there, the TV set. So 
sketches are drawn showing the positions of the above furniture arrangement and that uh, shape and sizes of the various rooms are finalized. Why I am telling this furniture requirement because in AutoCAD, I hope if you, are, if you know AutoCAD, AutoCAD there is one uh, provision is there, you can add that furniture inside whatever you are uh, what to say. Suppose after drawing your plan, uh, for example your living room is there, in AutoCAD you can pick that furniture items and you can provide them. Then you can uh, check whether that, uh, for, because the, for example that dimension, uh, whether you, that particular area fulfill that uh, dimension of that particular sofa set, particular chair or particular what to say bathroom, that uh, location of uh, that uh, WC. So all the things uh, you can do. Nowadays in AutoCAD there is a provision actually, whatever the furniture requirement you can pick and you can paste there. Then you can check. As per that the customer, uh, whatever the customer requirement is there, that is satisfying or, or not. Because you know that furniture, because if you are any, anyway, based on that your roominess, you have to do better. Because uh, I, I already discussed, because when living bedroom, bedroom is there or living room is there, whatever it is, whatever things you need to occupy there, it should be fit into that. Okay, what you need to fit into that, that uh, decide uh, ruminous. So that's why whatever the things there, you can fit there and accordingly that uh, requirement of furniture is very much important actually. So what are the furniture you are supposed to bring there and how that occupancy, what are the dimensions you have to do, all the things you should know. So that's why this, uh, this also one of the uh, major of uh, uh, building principles actually. What are the uh, furnitures actually? What are the furnitures you require for various rooms? And the seventh one is uh, circulation. That is another building planning principles. Have you heard about circulation? What do you mean by circulation? Circulation. Walking area. Walking area. Yeah, it's, uh, it's related to walking only. It's related to walking only. It's, it's uh, not walking, uh, that's not the word you have to use. Uh, yeah, it's what uh, to say, accessibility actually, you can say it's access. Circulation means the access or the internal through, uh, how you can internally move from room to room or from floor to floor. Normally, if you are any building, there are two types of movements are there. One is horizontal movement, one is vertical movement. You can move like this, you can move like this. That is called a circulation. So that is called a circulation. Uh, there are two types of circulation. I already told you one is uh, horizontal circulation, second is vertical circulation. So can you tell me that uh, horizontal circulation example? Horizontal circulation means the movement on the same floor, such as from room to room or within the same room. So how you can do that? Horizontal uh, uh, circulation, how you do? Because if you are planning everything, there is no access, uh, there is no passages, what you do? No use of that plan. Passage is very much important, whether it is uh, hospital, whether it is uh, commercial, whether it is residential, uh, access is very important, circulation is very much important. So if you are not providing proper access, uh, uh, that plan should not be acceptable. Because so many people are telling that, uh, that everything constructed, but uh, very space is very much limited to walk and everything. It's a major problem people are facing. Because we never give much more attention into that uh, accessibility. That's very much important. The movement from one room to another room. Normally we will provide verandas, corridors, lobby we will provide, halls we will provide. That is the horizontal circulation. Normally passages is there, then veranda. Normally veranda is there, then corridors are there, lobbies are there, halls are there. So these are the some horizontal circulation. So desirable horizontal circulation has a straight, short and independent passages actually. Then one more thing, 
uh, in some while you provide circulation you provide privacy of the rooms also that's also very much important because you satisfy all those things actually when you design a build up, when you plan a drawing when you plan a building or something you are not uh, sacrifice the privacy but you have to provide that proper passages okay so that's the two things uh, very much important then uh, vertical circulation can you tell me one examples of vertical circulation vertical circulation means movement from one floor to another floor ground floors to first floor first floor to yeah. second stair is the one uh, important uh, vertical circulation uh, another is lift lift is there elevators are there so these are some of the vertical circulation system stair lift then uh, those things some elevators etc so but in case of vertical uh, circulation stairs should be easily accessible from entrances and various rooms without suffering the privacy so that also you have to consider when you plan that uh, building right so that also very much important circulation uh, circulation here I, I i hope i shown one figure here uh, you see this is the thing actually normally people when designing uh, when you plan the drawing this mistake commonly happening some people will design like this you uh, can you uh, see what is the difference between a and b anybody can say what is the difference between a and b anybody can say sir i have to walk longer to cross the room okay okay so here it shows that uh, how you are making the discomfort to that passenger actually okay so here uh, one thing is there uh, a and b actually uh, what to say show desirable and undesirable horizontal uh, circulation but uh, in case of c and d here c and d also you can see they are uh, also same problem uh, how that circulation the first one is uh, desirable second is undesirable what is the reason for undesirable for second one anybody can say sir to reach first to reach first floor in second case we need to go outside the house and go yeah in Actually, first case we directly go yeah because uh, i don't know in ancient type of building uh, some houses normally the staircase they will provide outside also but actually it is undesirable actually for movement actually it's very difficult you have to get out from the house and you have to climb you see the circulation means easy accessing actually the definition is how you can easily access from one place to another either one room to another or is one location to another location so if you considering the easiness you can see that figure a here figure a is desirable and here also easy access uh, figure a is done. so while you designing or planning or if you drawing all the things you have to take in care of i hope you understand and uh, next thing is that i hope uh, next is uh, circulation our next is sanitation you know the meaning of sanitation sanitation yes sir and what are, what what do you mean by sanitation providing light light is there then that is one provision sanitation provision another is sir how we are maintaining yeah. the yeah. yeah that is cleaning facilities cleaning facilities are there anything else light simulation is kitchen moment of what chimney Sir, in kitchens they will be using. Okay. Okay, that ventilation. Okay. Ventilation. Then sanitary units. Sir. Various types of sanitary units also come under sanitation actually. So sanitation considers mainly light provisions. Sir. Second is ventilation provisions. Sir. Third is sanitary units. Sir. and fourth one is cleaning facilities these are the four things comes under sanitation these are the four things comes under 
sanitation so can you tell me uh, what why light so light uh, why it is necessary so light is three types are there. one is natural light artificial light or combination of both so what is the function of light so natural disinfectant yeah who said this who said this? who said this? sir okay okay good 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 yeah good that's a good observation actually i hope you say that uh, light for what to say <laughs> lightning purpose okay anyway that is one of the important thing actually normally we will uh, most of the houses you know i don't know uh, we have to provide maximum sunlight actually natural light actually so the reason is as he said actually because light is necessary for illumination as well as destroying germs in the homes actually especially ultraviolet rays of the sun kill the disease germs <clears throat> so that's why uh, that is one of the important function not only illumination not only illumination that we discussed why we are uh, placing kitchen in the east side because kitchen is actually that is a cooking uh, we are doing all the things actually that kitchen should be very clean actually in that case uh, the sunlight diffusion is very much important so that's why uh, it's uh, this light is very much important natural light uh. so in natural light getting you know that normally we will provide windows and doors in order to get sufficient light in open area so here uh, one thing you have to provide this way the minimum window area should be one tenth of the floor area for a particular room or anywhere if you are considering the floor area the minimum window area should be one tenth of the floor area suppose if your floor area is 10 meters square okay if your floor area is uh, 10 meters square you have to provide a minimum window area of 1 meter square so that's very much important so that is uh, the meaning actually in order to get the natural light then one more thing direct glare should not be allowed in the lighting so uh, that we discussed in aspect how you can avoid a direct glare how you can orient the building how the, the, the positioning of different rooms everything we discussed but in natural light two things you should know minimum window area should be one tenth of the floor area direct glare should be avoided then uh, most of the cases direct light is provided by vertical windows you can see this window most of the cases we can see windows in vertical side only we never provide window this uh, on the roof like that we never provide in order to get the uh, what to say more light is provided by then second is artificial light. I don't want to ex uh, explain about artificial light. You know that artificial light. Uh, I don't want to discuss. Then ne next is uh, uh, how to improve lighting by coloring. Coloring of building. That's also one important term actually because lighting you can improve by applying light colors to the walls and the white color to the ceiling actually. Normally, uh, I don't know you, please, you people. I think you know that normally dark color we never prefer for building painting purpose. Normally, we will use light colors. You can see normally uh, people will uh, white shade uh, colors only they will prefer. And uh, ceiling always we prefer actually white colors only because in order to get that uh, uh, lighting, okay we can improve lighting in that way then industrial lighting also there industrial lighting uh, i don't know industrial lighting uh, normally we will use some uh, saw toothed roof actually uh, in that uh, figure you can see here here you can see here here uh, i hope it is visible in uh, industry we will use north light roofing north light roofing means here you can see the glazing they will provide this is the glazed sheets Okay, 
So what is happening is the north light will hit here and it diffuses light in, inside that uh, particular factory building or somewhere industry building. So this is one uh, lighting system for industry. Okay. So I hope you understand actually. So two through roof. So two through roof here. Here this portion is glazed. So, okay. The diffused light will enter and maximize the lighting inside that particular building. And another is staircase lighting. Staircase lighting, you know that normally uh, sufficient opening and jali can provide enough natural light in stairs throughout the day. Normally, I don't know, you people know that in staircase we will provide large, uh, what to say, uh, that, uh, that uh, window of uh, breadth is small, but height is very much good in order to provide maximum uh, sunlight actually. So artificial lighting also we will provide uh, uh, in offices, laboratories, hospitals and uh, schools actually. Okay. The next is uh, uh, ventilation. Ventilation is the secondary uh, second uh, sanitation provision. Ventilation, I, you know that actually. What is the meaning of ventilation? Ventilation, I know that. Uh, I, I hope you know. Ventilation means? What do you mean by ventilation? Air flow. Yeah, air, air, that is a change in air in the room actually. That is called ventilation. Because the ventilation removes uh, that respirated hot air, foul air or bacteria or unpleasant odors etc. And it brings cool and fresh air inside the room. Fresh air means oxygen inside the room. So normally two types of ventilation there. One is uh, natural ventilation. Second is post ventilation. So natural ventilation, how you provide, we already discussed uh, by placement of doors and windows in the opposite sides uh, by placing the ventilators near the top of the room. So these thing you have to take care of while you draw that uh, plan. For example, uh, anything is there, one uh, door is there. So the cross ventilation, in order to get the cross ventilation, if one door is there, the opposite to that actually, uh, there is a provision of another door or another window because always it is opposite actually. One door is there, it is opposite to that. One window is there, it is opposite to that because in order to get the proper cross ventilation. So uh, while you are designing something, one plan, you should know about that. The placement of doors and windows uh, always on opposite sides actually. Then one more thing, ventilator, that uh, provision should be always top of the room actually. Okay, <clears throat> so usually natural ventilation is enough for build, uh, uh, residential buildings. Uh, we never uh, provide some forced ventilation because forced ventilation we always prefer in uh, what to say in factory buildings actually. Why we because uh, uh, factory buildings the requirement is very much actually because ventilation because so many people are working, so many activities are going on. That's why we need uh, artificially you have to make the ventilation. Here in the figure you can see that uh, how they are doing forced ventilation. Okay. Here you can see here uh, they are uh, what to say fresh air is coming this way and uh, that uh, foul air here exhaust is there, exhaust fans are there. Whatever the foul gas will go out through this exhaust. So this is the way uh, we what we, we are doing in uh, especially in industrial building and factory buildings. We will do some forced ventilation. Normally in residential building we never prefer. Uh, there is no need of forced ventilation. Because uh, natural ventilation is enough for residential buildings actually. Okay. Then uh, next is uh, sanitary units. You know that what are the sanitary units? What are the things for uh, bathrooms actually okay that uh, uh, that that positioning of that uh, various uh, sink uh, the urinals uh, wc and uh, latrines or oh, dustbins uh, all the things actually uh, how you can make it in proper way then water tanks uh, that uh, the positioning of water tanks uh, and to get the continuity of water supply and cleaning and etc so these all things will comes under sanitary units and finally that uh, cleaning facilities. Cleaning facilities you know that. 
so what are the cleaning facilities should be provided in particular building so these are all uh, comes under what to say these all things are under sanitation i hope you understand sanitation these are things uh, we discussed now next is elegance that is another uh, building planning principle can anybody say what is the meaning of elegance sir? what is the meaning of elegance so stylish, stylish look of building yeah. yes because uh, especially nowadays uh, people are uh, very much concerned about that uh, aesthetic view how my house should be looks very beautiful you can say it's due to your personal aspirations otherwise you can say because of your ego that uh, my own building should be praised by others okay so that's why nowadays elegance is one of the important thing actually but um, frankly what to say engineer side we not thinking much about elegance our plan always should be but that is the architect what they are doing actually how they can make that building more elegant actually the elegance is that uh, aesthetics of the building how they can how can improve that the feeling of beauty and luxury in the appearance of the building how we can improve that is the meaning of uh, aesthetic uh, elegance actually so how you can make uh, proper elegance how you can make proper elegance how you can make the elegance so by giving proper elevation and layout yeah elegance is proper uh, mainly produced by proportions of dimensions of building then choice of various methods uh, the materials of the building various types of building some buildings you can see uh, they will use some stone they will use some different types of arches they will use different types of domes uh, shell uh, so various types of material they will use uh, then various types of elevations uh, then various types of exterior color scheme they will provide uh, then positioning of doors and windows can add beauty to the structure so these all things you can include various aspects are there how you can make your uh, normally people will prefer what to say pitched roof you know pitched roof flat roof is there pitched roof is there slope roof so slope roofs are looking more beautiful the materials also some people instead of using that brick and uh, instead of using this uh, concrete they will use some tiles they will use roofing tiles we can use otherwise we can use uh, various types of stones you can use uh, and various types of coloring things you can use there are various uh, methods are there to enhance the elegance of a particular building okay so uh, the main thing is that it attracts the person who can enjoy the use of the building satisfactorily so elegance is the important principle Uh, but through it is neglected through ignorance actually nowadays we never uh, ignore that elegance actually nowadays i already discussed it. it's a personal aspiration and the ego always uh, one person uh, always want his house should look very good so and finally economy that is the final building planning principle economy economy i discussed uh, last class also i discussed uh, so whatever the things you are doing money is important you you have this much of money and you want to build a bungalow it's not possible whatever the money demands that kind of construction you have to do that kind of building plan you have to design he has this much money and you are uh, you can't the plan for a bungalow type building so that's why the technology is very much important so that is the first thing actually normally one designer one building planner first ask that is the first question to the customer what's your budget 
He will say 50 lakhs is my budget. So somebody will tell one crore is my budget. So accordingly only he can plan actually. Because the plan for 50 lakhs and the plan for one crore is entirely different. Uh, I hope you understand. So that's why uh, this thing is very much important. This is the first two things actually. Normally uh, before drawing, before planning, uh, this is the thing we need to measure. Economy measures is very much important. Okay. It is a strong and the buildings, uh, solid building structure may appear to be costly at the start, but in the long run, it provides to be cheaper due to minimum maintenance cost. Uh, you know that any type of building, there are two types of cost are there. One is initial cost is there, another is maintenance cost is there. Maybe initial cost is high, uh, sometimes uh, maintenance cost will be very low. We always keep that. Initial cost, okay, we provide money. We want that uh, our maintenance cost should be optimum. So that is very much important. So what are the things you can do by economy measures actually? Economy measures means how you can minimize the cost of a building actually. Because uh, uh, we, you know that um, aspect or circulation, what are the things we discussed, uh, we can't ignore anything because of shortage of funds actually. So what you can do is how you can minimize the economy. How you can minimize the economy? Anybody here any suggestions? How you can make why, that symbol? Hmm, anything? Building materials. Yes, building material is one important. By standardization of materials and sizes and by systematic planning of construction. Building materials, uh, you can minimize the cost. Uh, then, then somebody told my making simple designs. Uh, that is one important thing. Why you are going for a very complicated designs and everything? Make simple design, make simple money. Simple money investment. Anything? One important thing is that uh, that is a um, people uh, normally prefer to minimize the height of the building. You see, uh, this is my house. I need a house for one thousand uh, uh, thousand square feet. I need a house. But uh, that is my area. I need this much area. But where I can reduce it? If you think that height you can reduce. I already told you normally 2.3 meter up to you can go. Some people, some houses you can see they will provide height up to 2.6 meter or 2.7 meter. I don't know. You see it. Otherwise, minimum if you provide 2.75 meter height because for person. 2.75 is enough actually. 3 meter is there, you will get more uh, one to say. A uh, little more, it looks more spacious, that's all. But for us, economy measures, you can reduce the height to minimum 2.75 meter. Then one more thing, uh, using uh, a square or circular plan instead of H, L, T and rectangular shapes will also reduce the economy. But uh, we never prefer that actually. But luminous will be less. Because if you go for more things, actually you have to sacrifice some other things. So what are the best achievement things only you have to take in care of? Are you understanding? So uh, mainly you consider about the material cost, how you can reduce them, then how you can uh, reduce that uh, uh, building height. And another is uh, adopting small areas of uh, windows and uh, doors uh, and the simple designs of doors and windows. Uh, and like that, you can reduce that economy. So that's all about uh, building planning principles. I hope you understand. Anybody have any doubt? Uh, we discussed all 10 uh, building planning principles. Anybody have any doubt? You need any break? You can take 10 minutes break. If you need break, you can take. Yes, sir. Ten minutes break, you can take. 